Well, hey everybody, it is Wednesday, April 21st. Um, before I go on, I screwed up yesterday, I misread my calendar, and the, um, the next live stream is going to be on the 27th. I think I, what did I say, like the, I forget what I said yesterday, you know, but um, I, miss, I missed a week in there. So I just want to let everybody know it's going to be the 27th, uh, 3 p.m. as usual. So sorry about that if anybody uh, canceled a vacation or you know, whatever, or surgery, I don't know. Um, just uh, sometimes I, I stare at the, at the uh, calendar and just, blank out. Yeah, it's just like you go, really? What am I talking about? So that's that. That's my, my most urgent business for the day. Um, well, not for the day, but for the moment. Um, I, I, it was so much fun doing Carol uh, visiting Thoroughbred, and it was really sweet. Carol sent me a really nice email afterwards said how much she enjoyed and appreciated it and everything. She's, she's such good people. You know, one of the special ones, I'll tell you. Um, but uh, I was thinking about some other things. And one of the things I've, I've really enjoyed, because I will get back to the real recognizable artists, the Jameses and Phils and people like that. But I really enjoy um, sending artists that you may not be familiar with out there. Uh, and a, a lot of them have gotten just great responses from, from people you know, saying how much they're enjoying that music. They were totally, you know, unaware of it and really liking it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that uh, again today. Uh, uh, in 2015, I got called to do an album. And it was for a gentleman uh, named Pat McGee. And he was, uh, he had a group called the Pat uh, McGee Band, uh, but he also did some solo work. And this was one of his solo albums. And um, there, he was based out of Richmond, Virginia. And uh, we cut it um, at a place called Boulevard Recorders, a recording studio uh, in Hollywood that is on um, Hollywood Boulevard. And, but it was the original um, uh, producer's workshop. And that was where I used to do a lot of work with Bill Schnee. And I always remember that we were in there working on an album project when we heard that Elvis had died. And uh, I remember the first th thought that came to my mind was the gravy train just got derailed because I knew all the guys in Elvis's band and that was a gig of life, you know, and for a lifetime. And all of a sudden, boom, he was, he was gone. Um, uh, really, it was so tragic, but it would just really hit me. I went, wow, this is, you know, you, You've got this gig that's so great, and all of a sudden, you know, you're it's done. And they they went, the guys all went on, and they did, um, you know, other things. There was a virtual Elvis tour, I think, and, and all that. But um, I think um, a bunch of them, bunch of them, ended up, I think, uh, become, working with Neil Diamond after that. But the thing that was cool about Producers Workshop is, in the adjoining building was ma uh, Mastering Labs, Doug Sachs's place where he mastered like God, at least half the records I ever played on were there. And Doug was the funniest, delightful character you'd ever want to meet. So whenever we were working at Producers, we all go next door and hang out with Doug and, you know, hang and tell stories and just have a, have a great time. He was a true, uh, truly unique individual. Um, but when we got to do this, the thing that's, that's fun for me about things like this is when we did this album, the core band for this album was me, Russ Kunkel, Danny Korchmar, Wadi Wachtel, and Jeff Pivar. And Jeff Pivar, we just, I just visited the other day, is he is the P in CPR with David Crosby and James Raymond. So, I mean, we all keep inner, inner, uh, linking together. But um, there was a, a number of other people on this album, too. I mean, re really, Pat put together quite a A-team of people. Um, Paul Barrera from Little Feet, who we lost, God, I guess last year. I guess it was last year. at time, really. Um, such a great guitar player. He was, he was on the date. Um, uh, John Popper 
who was the harmonica player in Blues Traveler, was there. Um, Gabe Witcher uh, is playing violin on it. I, I remember the first time I met Gabe, um, he, he was doing a lot of work um, with Herb Peterson and um, Chris Hillman uh, in their group. But uh, I remember the first session I did with with Gabe, and they said, oh, we're going to call this guy. He's a really great fiddle guitar player, I mean, a fiddle violin player. And we're going, cool. And this guy shows up, and he's covered in tats, and he has a big mohawk. And I went, yes, this is great. You know, he gets so used to everybody coming pretty pretty straight, and Gabe was a, was a breath of fresh air. Um, the uh, Who else did we have on here? Uh, uh, John Redling, I think it's John Red, Redling, I think was his last name, playing organ. Um, Patrick uh, McAloon playing mandolin and Michael uh, Gigan on horn. Uh, Matt Manate uh, uh, on banjo. Uh, then there was a bunch of people came in to sing background with him. Uh, Jonathan Williams, uh, Pat Monahan, the singer from Train, uh, came in. Hugh McGee. Obviously, uh, Pat's a relative. Um, Colby James, uh, Hank Futch, and Sam Burns. Uh, Clay Blair, it, it, uh, he engineered. I don't know if it's his studio or not, but um, uh, really good. But we really did it old school, man. Had a tape machine running, everything. I mean, it was like really great. It was a real throwback uh, adventure going in the studio with Pat and doing this. And really fun stuff. It's a really good album. I'm going to play a few tracks from it, but um, it's a, it, was a, it was a really neat thing. I mean, anytime I can be in the studio with the team, it's great. And we cut everything live. I mean, this was all, everybody was in, in the room working. It wasn't one of these piecemeal albums in somebody's garage. Um, so it really had a great vibe to it. So I'm going to go ahead and, and play a couple of things here. This one is called... Bad idea, but it's Pat McGee, M-C, capital G-E-E. -E. And he's got a bunch of, of stuff up on YouTube. So um, well worth, I think, well worth checking out. It's another one of those artists. I'm not sure whether you would have been aware of him or not. But um, if not, worth, uh, worth checking out. So here's Bad Idea. Hold on. Get it. Hold on. Oh, come on. Hey. Stop this. Yeah, this is one of these things where I'm having issues with my old computer here. And Five minutes, know. so you'll know when a new home hits the I market. Had already, That's real estate done right. I had already got it. Okay, that's not it. Um, it's supposed to be this song right here. And I'm, I'm such a genius, I'm such a genius. Shaky start for me, but here we go. Never walk. 
lick. for sure. And then the boys are going crazy outside. They've had their breakfast and they're out now. It's overcast today, which is great. It's been hot and uh, it's nice to have gone outside and have it be a little bit cooler. And we've got a band Zoom uh, in 32 minutes. And so uh, hopefully they'll keep barking so that the people keep going, what the hell is that? Per what's going on there? Um, I, you know, again, I close my eyes. I know this room so well from having worked in it so many times and I can see where I'm sitting in there and there's a drum booth right next to me and when I look over my left shoulder while I was playing I'd be looking right at Russ and if I looked off to the right I saw uh, Wadi and Cooch and Pivar there and straight across from me was the B3 organ um, it was a vocal booth there and, and Pat was in that with his acoustic guitar and uh, and then everybody would just be roaming around that but it's uh it was it was so much fun. So I'm going to uh, see what we got here. I'm not sure what this one is. Let's grab it. This is called "When Did Everything Go Wrong?" Hmm. Hmm. Question we all ask. <laughs>
work at this Babe, we gotta work at this When did everything go wrong? Pretending to just be strong Oh, baby, when did everything go wrong? So wrong, oh Always feel that the influences that the like the early '70s uh, music, you know, you know the James Jackson Eagles, everybody from that period had on younger, later writers. I mean, this, this stuff feels like it could have been right out of that period. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty cool. Let me see what I got here. I'll do two more for you. Oh, this is uh, this one uh, is called Overboard, and this is with. Uh, Pat Monahan from uh, Train. So here, here we go. Check this one out.
it's funny. We finished the song like two minutes ago, um, but they just left the tape running, and we just sat and noodled and jammed, and, and it was great that they left it on the, uh, on the song. And uh, it's rare that anybody does that. You know, we do that a lot in the studio where a song's over and then we kick back into something else and just have tons of fun with it, but it always ends up, cut that one off. So um, uh, so it was, it was fun. I forgot that they had left that on there. Let me do one more quick song here for you. This is called Kite String. This is really a fun track, so check this one out. And then I'm gonna, oh, before, I don't wanna forget, I wanna send out Birthday wishes today to Nick Collins, Phil Collins' son, my drumming buddy. Uh, Nick turns 20 today, and Genesis is going to be hitting the road, and uh, they've already got their tour set up. I, I think they're going to be starting in Europe in September, assuming everything's okay, and Nick's going to be playing drums for them, but we just... You know, I've been playing with Nick since he was 16, and he just gets better and better and better. And so uh, today's his birthday, so happy birthday, Nick. Yeah, have a good one. Yeah, you're, you're quite a kid, man. I'm a young man now. Amazing. So, okay, here's Kite String. (laughs) 
I love this little three and four little licked section there. Okay, well, I am going to go get ready for our Zoom, which is going to be happening really uh, soon now. And I'm going to wish everybody a wonderful day. I'll be back tomorrow. And um, again, happy birthday, Nick. And live stream is the 27th, not the screw up I talked about yesterday. And so I wish everybody a great day. Um, again, <laughs> thank you, everybody out there doing your jobs to try to keep things going. Um, looking, uh, there's so many things going on in this country right now that are uh, just uh, have to be thought about in so many different ways. Um, some things are really getting incredibly positive and other things we still really have to work on. So, um, but all you folks that are, you know, working everywhere that comes in contact with the public, just stay safe and everybody respect the people who are working in these places and uh, give them space and give them protection too. And uh, other than that, I look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow. So um, I'm just going to organize my copious notes here. And uh, I'm sitting real w way back in my chair, so it's... Bye.